Good enough. Let's tell that, Phil. Oh, right. Uh, I'll sort it out tomorrow. Okay. Cheers. Right. We all here, then? Uh, Bob. Bob, anyone seen Bob? He's just checking the cars out front. He won't be long. OK. Better make a start without him, then. As I'm sure you've all heard in the grapevine, we had a heavy management brainstorming session at the end of last week. It had come to a few people's notice, yes. All we were doing was looking at ways the company could increase future business. We're already doing pretty well, I'd have thought. A lot better than before. Never had it so good, to be honest. Ah, got to look further ahead, though. What about all the new commitments we've taken on? Oh, speak of the devil. Come on in, lad. You look frozen stiff. <laughs> Cheers, Ian. Car's all locked up. Safe and sound. Well done. I've only just started, so you haven't missed much. Uh, where was I? Future business plans, I think. Oh, yeah. Well, anyway, we began by taking a long, hard look at the customers we've actually got. And we found that practically all of our customer base is retail, is private owners. Business users are, to say the least, pretty thin on the ground. Now, before we go any further, if we just define a business user, especially for the benefit of our two newcomers, business users are companies or individuals who can offset the cost of their car or van against tax. So that's everyone from your local doctor to, well, you name it. With the emphasis on your local bit in our case, uh, not your Avis car rentals or anything like that. What are we talking about? Local fleets up to what, sir? 24? Maximum. We're just not geared up for taking on the bigger operators. Well, not yet, anyway. But there seem to be quite a number of company names on our customer files. Yep, I know we've got some, but they're a pretty small proportion of our total business. You look at the breakdowns we were using at last week's management meeting. Nationally, total fleet, company and business car sales represent getting on for a half of the market. And the bit that we're interested in, the small fleet sector, is the second biggest chunk of that. Now, if you compare only the small fleet sector as a proportion of a dealer's private car sales, it should be getting on for a quarter of our entire business. It's nothing like that. Nothing like. I know, but there's no reason why it shouldn't be. Pulling our proper share of the local small fleet business is the biggest single opportunity for steady growth we've got. Five or six years ago, it was before you came here, we gave the business car side a go for a while. It just didn't work out, did it? Oh, we expected too much too soon. It's a pretty half hearted effort anyway, to be honest. You know what it's like, cracking a decent business so is more complicated than ordinary retail. Seemed to be lots of effort for no immediate results. After a while, we just took the easy way out and stuck to what we knew best. Well, I think it just takes time and careful planning to get the momentum going, that's all. Anyway, this is now a top priority for our whole outfit. So that's us, service, parts, even the forecourt. Now, I know it's not going to fall into our laps overnight, but the sooner we start, the sooner we'll crack it. Well, personally, I'm all for it, providing we're a bit more professional this time round. It was almost embarrassing the way we went about it before. We had no credibility with the customer at all. We were stone dead as soon as we got a foot in the door, and that wasn't very often. Right. Well, this is what I've been thinking, then. If we're going to sell successfully to the business customer, we are going to have to be properly organised, right? Right. We need a basic formula for finding and dealing with these types of customer. Now, I know we haven't got one at the moment, so I suggest for the first customer we all work together as a team. You mean all of us? Me too. Yeah, why not? You and Susanna have got to learn what it's all about sometime. We can target a prospect, <coughs> jointly work out a sales pitch for the business, mm -hmm. and establish a blueprint for all future jobs as we go along. Do a sort of collective hitch, you mean, just to get our hand in? Absolutely. And as sales admin coordinator, Suzanne, mm -hmm. you can help us by keeping track of all the details and uh, setting up the proper systems we're going to need. What do you think? Sounds good to me. I don't mind telling you, my business client, Patter, is a bit rusty. Well, <laughs> it's mostly just pretty common sense. But selling to business users can't be that different to selling to private buyers, can it? I mean, they're the same cars, aren't they? It's a whole new ball game, me old son. First, you have to understand what kind of motoring business users in general actually want and make sure you're organised to give it to them. And then you have to go out and find them because they don't go shopping around the showrooms like ordinary customers. Then you have to drag all the information you need out of every prospect so as you can make a sensible motoring proposition based on the needs of their particular business. And then... And only then, you might get lucky and sell them a car or two. <laughs> Ian's right, I'm afraid. Look, I think it might be best if we all went back and began at the beginning and asked ourselves, what do business car users actually want? That's the important thing. If we can just get that clear in our minds, then we'll know what sort of package we're going to have to put together to hit them with. Hmm.
Yeah, it's just having a chat. Why don't you dump the tray in the middle? We'll help ourselves. Oh, Cheers, Bob. Cheers. Right. To recap, this is what we've come up with so far. The three basic weapons we need to capture local business motoring. See, what we're saying is that business people don't simply buy cars. At least, not in the same way as ordinary customers do. They want a comprehensive, dependable transport system. And dependability is the first and most important requirement. You see, transport, to them, it's a business tool. It's just like, just like office systems or plant machinery. And for that reason, everything to do with their transport has got to be just as reliable. Because the last thing you need in business is hassle. Give them hassle and you're stone dead. Now, the next thing business customers need is what we've called fleet suitability. And that is simply, will the vehicle do the right job for the business? You see, a company can't be as self-indulgent as a private customer. Before anything else, a business vehicle has to earn its keep. And that job can vary from providing enough load space for all the gear a service engineer has to carry, to meeting the right levels of comfort for, say, a sales exec. Why comfort in particular? If you'd spent six months repping for a chocolate firm like I did, you'd know why. I practically lived in the car. The range has got to be suitable in other ways as well. It can help promote the company image as a successful business. And reflect someone's personal status within a company, a way of showing what the firm thinks of them. Which is why you've got the breakdown truck. <laughs> the right choice of models can act as an incentive for staff to move up the company ranks and even influence them to stay with the company. Well, I suppose there's the company perk aspect too. A lot of staff don't really need a company car for their work. It's all part of their salary package. That's right. So you can both see what we mean about fleet suitability. Mm. It's about meeting every sort of transport need in a company with the right vehicle and the right benefits. From top to bottom and, of course, at the right cost. Which is the last of the business user's needs we have to satisfy, but certainly not the least. In the end, any deal has to be competitive because it all comes down to the money a firm is willing and able to spend on its vehicles. Which means if we want to pull their business, we've got to show them that dealing with us is financially worthwhile. Not necessarily cheaper, just that the total deal we can offer can make a positive contribution to their profitability in some way. So, what do we really have to sell our local business people? Not simply cars, but dependability. Reliable business motoring. Suitability. Best vehicles for the job. And profitability. It pays to do business with us. A very tidy way of wrapping it all up. So who are we going to sell to? Who do you think? Come on then. Any local firm with a potential for up to 24 vehicles. Well, um, retailers, wholesalers. Wholesalers, yeah, good. Retailers, depends how big. The larger tradespeople, the local manufacturers, if there are any. Uh, professional people. Professional firms, yeah, accountants, solicitors, architects. Estate agents, insurance brokers, wholesalers. I've already said that. Well, I think we've got the general idea anyway. Surprisingly, according to national figures, it's the companies in the two to five vehicle bracket that account for the largest share of sales in the sector. I have a feeling that could account for an awful lot of companies in our neck of the woods. And if we're now a bit selective about who we're going to approach, we're going to be snowed under. Right. Right. Well, this is what I think we should do. Let's start by collecting as many likely prospect names as we can, out of which we'll create a, a pool of, say, 40 prime targets at any one time. Once we've cut our teeth on the first hit, we'll tackle the first ten between us. And that way we get through them a few at a time without overwhelming mm -hmm. ourselves. Mm -hmm. Now, either we pull them, or they go into a follow-up system, and we tackle the next ten. Agreed? Well, yeah. 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 Right. Now, the only thing we have to think about now is... Where do we get the names to put on the list? Good stuff, all of this. I never realised the old town was such a hive of business activity. Makes you wonder what we've been missing all this time. It surprised me and all. You've done well, Bob. Well, it was me and Suzanne, actually. We just ploughed through the yellow pages and Thompson's in the office, like you all suggested. Then we did the directories in the local library. You know, Compass, Kelly, the local Chamber of Commerce book. The librarian was really helpful. We also lifted a lot of the advertisers in the local press. At least you know they're in business. Suzanne reckons we ought to check the papers regularly anyway, particularly the local business section, just to keep tabs on small businesses coming into the area and outfits that are expanding. It was a good effort, anyway. How'd you get on here? Brilliantly. Jumped in the car on my day out and whistled over to the North End Industrial Estate for a couple of hours. Absolute gold mine. Cruised around for a bit, picked out all the likely-looking companies, clocked what was in the staff and director's car parks. 
I've almost got nicked for loitering. <laughs> what I didn't realise, though, that there's a brand new business park going up just the other side of the road. Absolute palaces. Only two or three companies there at the moment, but uh, more on the way. The site office was more than helpful. It's amazing what's going on. Even more amazing is what's going on under our noses. As I said I'd do, I just started outside the door and worked my way out. A street at a time for about half a mile. Just legged it. I don't know about charity beginning at home, but prospecting certainly should. It staggered me just what's on the doorstep. That flooring contractor a couple of doors away is only the office. But there's a big warehouse on the Burstone Road with four reps doing half the county. And you know the old dairy round the back? It's been taken over by some damn great printing outfit now. This is all within half a mile of us. We must be walking around with our eyes shut. Mind you, we haven't really been looking till now, have we? You have any luck? Not bad. Uh, Les got one of his blokes to go through the service accounts and pull out all the business customers. Now, I've done the same with our own files and also with the forecourt accounts. There again, there's just so many forecourt customers I've never even heard of. So much for interdepartmental communication. Sorry to interrupt, Mike. One of your customers wants a quick word in the showroom. Right, I'll be back. Uh, spare us a sec if you can. We're going to have to move on that record system for business prospects a lot quicker than I thought. Look at this lot. Solid gold. But it's going to be useless if we don't get it properly organised. What do you think? Well, there are a couple of software programs that will do everything we're ever likely to want. List, sort, update, even prepare contact reminders. Or well, there's the good old card system. I know which one I'd rather go for. Well, we'll make a decision on that today. I just don't want to get off on the wrong foot. We've got to be as businesslike as the customers we're trying to nail. While we're on the subject of sorting things out, have you had any further thoughts on how we're going to organise the prospecting from now on? We don't want to fall over each other's feet. Yeah, I have. That's what these lines on the map are for. In the end, I think we ought to stick to the territory system. You can operate on this side of town, Ian, which includes the business estate you've already been to, and Mike can take the rest, which includes the South End Business Park. Me? I'll concentrate on the offices in the city centre. Now, I think that's fair. Agreed? Well, what about me? Don't I get a chance to get my hand in? Don't worry. Once we get going, there'll be plenty of you to do. You can start by helping me draw up a new showroom rotor so we make sure everything's properly covered. So does this mean we're only near to sorting out who we're going to hit first? It'd be nice to get something rolling. Well, funny you should say that. There are one or two names that uh, look interesting. Ah, here we are. So we already know them then? Yeah, they've got a petrol account. So that's a help. Reasonable spender, seven vehicles. Oh, and that's what we're going at the deep end. Who are they? Company called Complete Business Communications. Hang on a sec. That rings a bell. Yes, here we are. They're up on the new estate. They sell computers, computer supplies, that sort of thing. Looks a sharp outfit. It seems as though you've drawn the short straw, then. It's your patch. You are the hip man. You got my posh suit anyway. Now, don't forget, we're all going to have a hand in this first one, right? Now, the first thing we have to find out is what their current vehicles are. Before we do that, we need to know who's responsible for buying them. What's the number? Um, here we are. 764-764. These ex-telephone salespeople are all the same. The first thing you have to learn about telemarketing is don't expect miracles. The more people you phone, the more confident you become and the more success you have. Hello? Oh, good morning. I wonder if you'd mind telling me the name of your managing director, please. Mr. Baldwin. Thanks. May I have a word with his secretary, please? Thanks very much. Hello. Good morning. My name's Suzanne Hinton of Thomas and Brooks Limited. We need to write to Mr. Baldwin, and I just wanted to make sure we have his full name. Yes. Yes. Oh, fine. Mr. Baldwin is responsible for purchasing all your company's motor vehicles, isn't he? Oh, he isn't. Who would that be, then? Mr. Jackson. Oh, I hope you don't mind my asking, but just as a matter of interest, what do they both drive? I see. Well, thanks. You've been very helpful. I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Norma. And Mr. Jackson's secretary is... Well, thanks, Norma. If we need any more help, uh, you won't mind if I give you a quick call. Thanks. Super. Bye. We were lucky. It's not always that easy. But we're uh, not selling, only trying to get some information. The man you want is the finance director. Name, Trevor Jackson, FCA. Secretary's name, Sally Willis. He drives the senator. The MD, a BMW. Providing you're relaxed, 
and polite. MD secretaries are usually pretty helpful, if only to keep you away from their boss. And they're useful to have on your side, too. Yeah. Well then, all we have to do now is compose a warm-up letter to introduce ourselves. Okay, yeah, Friday the 7th at 1 o'clock. Yeah, I've got that, thank you. Bye. Right. Well then, how did it go this afternoon? Oh, all right, I suppose. I mean, Jackson's not the sort to welcome me with open arms and force large gin and tonics down here, but it went okay. Did you all see a copy of the introductory letter we sent out? Uh, dear Mr. Jackson, etc. Just letting him know that we're the local specialists in business motoring. Um, if he could spare us the time to give us some information, etc., etc. Made short, friendly, businesslike. A couple of days after we sent the letter, I made a follow-up call. He didn't exactly bite my hand off for a meeting, but after I told him it would only take a few minutes, he gave in. Well, come on then, tell us what happened. Well, it was all pretty uneventful, really. I got there a few minutes before time and was whistled in to see him straight away. Send Mr. Berry in, please. Mr. Jackson, Ian Berry, thanks for seeing me. Nice to meet you, please. Come and sit down. Thank you. I got your letter. How do you think I can help you? Well, at this stage, I just need some very basic information about your company's business motoring. It won't take long, I assure you. Before we go any further, you ought to know I'm more or less happy with the setup as it is at the moment. I don't want to waste your time. I think you'll probably find it a useful exercise anyway, Mr. Jackson. As I mentioned in my letter, at least you'll see the wide range of business motoring services we believe our customers are entitled to expect these days. If nothing else, you'll be able to make some hard comparisons with whoever provides your current vehicles. I suppose that's always handy. What do you need to know, then? A real bundle of joy, that Jackson. Anyway, I just kept my cool and went through the list of questions we prepared. Good idea, that list. Make certain you don't forget anything. I steered clear of offering up instant solutions, just concentrated on getting the information we all decided we needed. That way, he couldn't shut me down. He had nothing to object to because I didn't give him anything. Well, thanks for your time, Mr. Jackson. I know you're a busy man, so I'll be away. As I said, we'll put together an individual proposal for your company's business motoring. I'll contact you as soon as it's ready. Be about a week. Just pop it in the post. That'll be all right. Well, if you can spare the time, it would be better if we could go through it together. That way, if there are any points that need clarification, we can do it on the spot. I wasn't having that. Risk letting him bin all our hard work before he'd even read it. And that was it. At least you got the information. We'd stand no chance of making a strong pitch for the business if we didn't know what we were talking about, would we? You did damn well, considering. Nobody said it was going to be easy. These are the sort of people we're going to be dealing with. If they're any good at their job, they're going to be tough. What are they running at the moment? It's a mixed fleet. Fords, Vauxhall, one BMW. Uh, two estates, one van. The rest saloons. I'll give you all a copy of the details. The three directors are user choosers. The rest get what they're given by the MD. He's pretty fair with them, though. Do they buy outright? Lease purchase. What about replacement cycle? Two years the bosses, three years everybody else. The two sapphires and two estates are due for a swap in a couple of months. Any idea of annual mileage? About 22,000 for the service engineers, 12 for everybody else. Servicing? Uh, local dealers. Any special operating problems? Yes, the two estates. They're on a 12-hour working day, Monday to Saturday, doing routine computer maintenance. And then they're on 24-hour call for emergencies, every day except Christmas, part of their customer contracts. The damn things are only off the road to change oil and tyres. That's something we'll have to leave to the loving care of Les and the service boys. In the meantime... I suggest we all have a good think over the weekend and have a look at the info. All right? First thing next week, we get some ideas together on our alternative fleet, start knocking out some comparative figures, and get the contents of the proposal sorted. We've got the first copy of the Fleet Facts magazine we're subscribing to, don't forget. You've got all the figures you want in there. I've already worked out a rough overall figure, just to give you some idea of what the business might be worth. Out of curiosity. And? That much? You um, sure? Amazing, isn't it? Still, when you add up all the sales profit, the services per vehicle, spare parts and other spin-off, it soon mounts up. Well, we'd better make sure the proposal document looks worth it. There's. Oh, 
Oh, sorry, I haven't interrupted anything, have I? Only the white heat of the sales department's creative talent. Well, nothing serious, then. Where's his nibs? Apologies, with the boss. He's asked us to show you what we've done so far, and he'll join us just as soon as he can. Well, I'm ready when you are. I've got a busy service department to run. Well, this is the deal we're cooking up for complete business communications. Blimey, we're going into publishing as well. It's presentation. We want to show him we're just as businesslike as he is, and leave behind something that he'll want to go through in detail on his own. Don't get me wrong. I think it's great. Let's have a look. If you start right at the very beginning, there's a brief introduction to us as a company. Uh, so they know who we are. Mm. A company dedicated to customer care and satisfaction. Oh, I like that. Then there's a bit about their company and what they do. Just a little bit of flattery to show we're interested. And it's more individual. Next, our business motoring philosophy. What we stand for. Their own transport department, less the worry. Based on the suitability, dependability and profitability ideas that we talked about. I like that. I like that. Next, a list of their current vehicles, broken down into directors, staff, sales and service engineers. Including average mileages, um, change cycles, finance, the lot. So they can see we've done our homework. After that, there are our model proposals. And then there are details of the first year warranty benefits, plus the added advantages of the optional second and third year cover. Followed by a direct price comparison with their own fleet, model for model based on straight retail value with projected costs over the two- and three-year change cycles. Depreciation, road tax, fuel, servicing and maintenance, everything. And then the total savings. Looks like a good few quid, that. I see you've even covered vehicle disposal as they become due. And a finance package. Thought of the lot, haven't you? And this is where the story really begins. The hinge pin of the whole exercise. After sales care. Well, what have the service department come up with to keep the customer show on the road? In this case, we put together a special package. First thing, a hotline telephone, with our Eddie as their usual contact. Ideal. He's good. Next, servicing by appointment. What's that? It just means that they turn up at an agreed time on the day of the service and we get stuck into the vehicle straight away. No hanging about. That way the vehicle's only here for as long as it takes us to do the job. And providing we can crack a problem in an hour, we'll do emergency jobs on the same quick turnaround basis as well. Hmm. I like the sound of that. Quick in and out like the dentist, but not as painful. Mm. <laughs> well, apart from the estates on the van, they probably won't bother, but it sounds good. That it, then? More or less. We'll collect and deliver vehicles for service, of course, and probably include a wash and valet for the director's cars. And the only other thing I'm looking at is courtesy vehicles. And normally customers only qualify if they're without vehicles for more than 24 hours. Maybe as part of the proposal we could make it half a day or give them a good discount on a car hire. But that depends on the boss. It could be good. It sounds great. Mm. Well, I'm glad you like it, because it'll probably be your car we give them. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, if that's it, then I'll get back to where the real work's done. Thanks, Les. That'd be a great help. Mm -hmm. What do you think so far? It'll probably win the Nobel Prize for Literature. Uh, seems like a lot of work. Oh, now we've done it once, we can adapt all the main elements for other customers, especially with that thing. Mm. Thanks again, Les. We hit the customer on Friday, so uh, keep your fingers crossed for us. I'll let you know how it goes. And so, after nearly six weeks of careful planning, we hit the target. I did more or less what we agreed. Played it cool, matter of fact, when I presented the proposal. I don't think he was expecting the whole works, but he was impressed. Take him through it page by page. Keep it brief, though. He's a busy man. He started off really deadpan. But the more we got into it, the more he liked it. He didn't say as much, but I could tell. Keep plugging the benefits. No transport worries. Leave that to us. It's a tailor-made service for business people. Maximum service, minimum hassle. Tough, though. Doesn't miss a trick. I can't help noticing there's no mention of discounts throughout this whole thing. Nor extended credit terms. Well, what we've tried to show in this document, Mr. Jackson, is normal cost comparisons between your current vehicles and comparable models of our own range. It's the fairest way of proving the basic good value of what we can offer. 
But on top of that, you'll find that we've incorporated a lot of ideas and extra value that are worth a good deal more to you and your business than any straight discount we could offer. Once you've had a chance to study the details, I'm sure you'll see what I mean. Make sure you know the points that could be a bit tricky, and have your answers ready just in case he brings them up. It was worth all the slog, that document. It had all the information he wanted, made it easy to present and digest, and he even delayed the start of another meeting just so we could finish off. Obviously, I can't make a decision now. I need to go through it all in detail. But you seem to have covered just about everything. I'll give you a call in a couple of days to arrange a short-term loan of some of our vehicles. I'd like to give you and your people a chance to see just how good they really are. And that was it. Heaven knows how it really went. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. Well, all in all, I'd say you played that just right, wouldn't you? Now, the bloke was hardly likely to take out his cheque and pass 50% up front, was he? We'll just have to wait and see, like you said. Do you know what tickled his fancy as much as anything? The wash and valet for the director's cars were known for service. He's very image conscious. Originally, that was my idea, that was. No, it wasn't. Your original idea was to give them all a free car wash. Never give more away than you have to in this business. Remember that. It was still my idea, though. Great, because you're the one who will have to wash them. <laughs> Well, we knew it wasn't going to be easy, but this is ridiculous. It's been more than six weeks since the last follow-up call on Jackson, and nothing. I don't get it. I mean, they like the cars. They even kept the bosses sterling over the weekend. We met them on most of the points they raised as well. Maybe they were just using us to get a better deal out of the other side. Wouldn't put it past them. Anyway, we learned a hell of a lot. And we knew damn well it would take time before we got our first score on the business side. I know. And out of the ten pitches, we had three non-starters, one blowout, one bankrupt, Three pending, a great, we'll talk to you next year, and only one definite proposal. Which is one more appointment than we would have had, and four possibilities if you look at it another way. At least the system is up and running now. From now on, things should be a lot easier. The optimism of youth. But Bob's right. We've got to just keep plugging away and following up every couple of months. Or sooner if we have to. Maybe we should have tackled someone smaller to begin with, instead of Jackson's outfit. Still, would have been nice if we cracked them. Right. Snap out of it. Same time, same place, next week. And keep up the rest of the good work. OK, Bob. Mm -hmm. OK. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Phil Cooper, sales. One moment. It's for you. Hello, Ian Berry. How can I help you? Yes. Yes? Next month. No problem. Well, I'm sure we can sort that out, yes. Yes, thanks for calling. Thanks. Bye. What's the good news? Uh, Jackson's secretary. He's accepted our proposals. Subject to a few points he thinks we can clear up later on. Can I pop in and see him next month when he gets back from Japan? And the bad news? We only get the estates to begin with. Makes me wonder whether it's all worthwhile. Oh, come on. I'm not having that, Ian. A couple of minutes ago, complete business communications were a petrol account customer. Now they're a fleet customer. That is one hell of a difference. We're in. The system works. And if we just do what we said we were going to do and love them to death, then it is only a matter of time before we pull the rest. Got to. Do you reckon? I know it. I'll bet you a month's salary. <laughs> You're on. Well done, Ian. You going to go and tell the others? <sighs> oh, um, by the way, did she uh, say anything else on the phone? Just that apparently they like the way we do business. Mm -hmm.